Hello everyone and welcome to Infinite Realms. Oh, well, let me say I'm way behind on stuff. I have about 20 videos in the queue and I'm just going to be honest, this is not one of them. Today I was just uh, watching Avengers uh, in-game and Infinity War. And in one of the special features, uh, Kevin Feige said, 22 movies to lead up to this. And I'm like, Re really? 22? And it got me thinking. All the movies in the MCU, are they required to watch before you can watch Infinity War and Endgame? So I thought I'd break it down, take a look at which movies are required to enjoy Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So starting things off, we have what is some considered the black sheep of the MCU, The Incredible Hulk. No, you really don't need to watch this movie to really get anything out of Avenger, either of the Avenger movies. Uh, most of this, most of what you need to know is covered in later movies. Really, in this one, it's not a, now don't get me wrong, I don't think The Incredible Hulk is a bad movie. I'm saying it's not required to understand Avengers Endgame. Mostly too, because it actually gets a little confusing because the end credit scene kind of runs counter to what happens later because Robert Downing Jr. shows up, starts talking to William Hurt, and as far as we're aware, nothing ever comes of this. And it's actually confusing because Stark is saying, hey, we're getting a group together, and that's not the case, so it's really, eh. So, yeah, I would say no to this one. Next up, Iron Man. I would have to say yes to this one. This uh, really starts off the MCU. It really sets things up, sets up Iron Man. Pretty much that final scene with Thanos is a callback to Iron Man. So yeah, this one would be required, absolutely. You need to understand Tony, you need to understand Stark, and you need to understand him really well. And this movie does that for you. Next up, the immediate follow-up, Iron Man 2. Now, there are a few scenes that talk about Tony's not eligible for the Avengers, etc, etc. And yeah, there's some cool little Easter eggs in that scene, but honestly, I don't think you're, requ you're required to watch this to be able to enjoy Avengers Endgame. There's really nothing happening here that affects a whole lot, except for maybe, you know, Pepper and Tony getting together, but I mean, you can gather that part together later in the later movies. So, really, I would say no to this. This is not required. Thor. Yes, Thor obviously would be required. Introduces you to Loki. Introduces you to a lot of the aspects of Thor. It's pretty important stuff to getting to that point with Avengers. So, yeah, I would say required on this one too because there's so much introduced there. That yes can get be reintroduced in Avengers but it just makes it easier to watch Avengers if you know what's happening now I will add it is a little bit confusing that you know Thor sees Loki die and then knows he's alive later that's a little weird but there is some sort of out of continuity explanations towards that so I'm not gonna nitpick on that too much also Thor does a lot for establishing Phil Coulson and yeah you get that in Iron Man 2 but it's done more so here so this makes it even more required because really Phil is important to Avengers so next I would is uh so next is Captain America the first Avenger yeah I would say this is required too there's Tesseract is in there that's a big part of Avengers of course introducing Captain America himself that would be a big deal the fact he's a man out of time etc 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 yes all are very important to get further in the story then of course the big one Avengers obviously you really need this new characters are introduced big storylines big ideas everything kind of comes together in this movie and sets up everything else later now this is required absolutely positive no doubt no doubt about it so next we have Iron Man 3 no, this is not required to understand anything in Infinity War or Endgame. In fact, this movie doesn't even get referenced again. It just kind of like fades out into the ether. 
the only reference back is uh, Trevor Slattery does show up in Shang-Chi but even that is not that big a deal it's kinda honestly Iron Man 3 is my least favorite of the MCU movies it just uh, there was a lot of a lot of baggage with that movie and I didn't think the idea really worked so that's my take on it I'm gonna say no to that one Thor the Dark World that's a tough one there are ideas introduced you got him you also got to point to the fact that Thor's mom dies in this and this is brought up heavily in Endgame and also they go back to Thor the Dark World in the movie so but really beyond that and that is introduced in other places as well I think this one you could pass on because there's almost nothing here that relates to anything in Infinity War and Endgame besides those two little tidbits and again they're pretty made pretty obvious to you so no you don't need to watch this next is Captain America the Winter Soldier now this is a tough one there's a lot of things going on it is important to understand Hydra has infiltrated shield that's why the Avengers are not under shield anymore that makes perfect sense you also get introduced to Sam Wilson aka Falcon uh, Bucky is shown to be alive Winter Soldier all big prominent people they all have uh, important storylines in, in both Endgame and Infinity War so I would have to say yeah this one you would need to watch Guardians of the Galaxy absolutely you would need to watch this Gamora and Nebula's relationship with Thanos is very important to both movies it becomes a really big part of both movies definitely would need to watch Guardians of the Galaxy never mind the fact it's just a really great movie Avengers Age of Ultron even though some important characters are introduced here like Scarlet Witch like Vision for the most part and you know the idea of t Tony wanting to protect the world and even though that's there I don't think this one is required. Um, the Sokovia Accords get explained later, which is res a result of this. This is a fine, entertaining movie, though. It's not bad. Uh, a lot of people like to say it's really bad, but I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was pretty good, actually. So, but no, if you wanted to enjoy Infinity War, you probably would not need to watch this one. Most of what happens in this one is explained later, so it doesn't quite mean you have to watch it next is Ant-Man I would argue that you do not need to watch Ant-Man because most of what you need to know about Ant-Man gets brought to you in Civil War so this movie is almost pointless it, that's not saying it's a bad movie I'm saying it's pointless in the overall narrative of the MCU there's not anything really brought in here that me it needs to be brought to the forefront to understand either Infinity War or Endgame. You just need to know that Scott Lang exists and you learn that in Civil War, so that makes it pretty simple. Captain America Civil War, yeah, absolutely. You gotta watch this one because you need to know why Tony and Steve aren't talking. The big bromance and why it broke up. That's it right there. You need to understand this. Like I said, a lot of things that were brought up before, like the Sokovia Accords, and everything else get some explanation in it you don't really need to know the exact details of it because it's explained to you it's pretty well put out there and easy to digest parts so yeah you really do need to watch uh, Captain America Civil War Doctor Strange I would say yes Doctor Strange is a different kind of character and probably would not understand him or what's going on without watching this movie and um, you know I will point out one thing I really liked about this movie is that Strange ended up outsmarting Dormam Dormammu Dormaskai Dormas Dormaski whatever his name is Dormammu Dormammu <laughs> but uh, that makes it a little even more fun so yeah 
definitely would need to watch Doctor Strange. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Hmm. Well, there is a lot of development with Nebula and Gamora's relationship. I'd say yes, just because you need that development to understand what point both characters are by the time they are in Endgame and what's going on there. Because they both are very different people from the where they were in the past. So this, this helps you understand why. Now, for the most part, you know, this movie... I would say no other than that but that is very important to the story so yeah I would say yes you probably have to watch this one spider-man homecoming yes you would absolutely need to watch spider-man homecoming um, for one thing it sets up the dynamic between Tony and Peter you kind of understand their relationship a lot more and why Tony is so upset when Peter gets dusted etc and it makes all that make sense so yeah I would definitely definitely say spider-man homecoming would need to be watched Thor Ragnarok. Um, I was leaning towards no on this, and then I realized Valkyrie gets introduced in this. Uh, I mean, of course, you need to know the fate of Ragnarok. You need to understand what Thor is going through, because Thor is pretty devastated after Infinity War. And you need to understand why. He lost his home, he lost his friends, he lost his brother. He lost everything. And so Thor, uh, this needs to be watched to understand that. Although I will argue, it, everything happened so fast, it kind of almost didn't register in me until I saw Avengers Endgame. And then I was like, oh, wow, boy. Yeah, Thor's been through a lot of crap. So, yeah, I would say this one probably would need to watch. Black Panther. Now, I'm just going to be honest. I actually, because of a series of events, did not get to watch Black Panther before Infinity War. I actually watched Infinity War first. I didn't feel like I missed a whole lot not watching Black Panther before that. I felt like I kind of was following everything. And um, yeah, there were a couple of minor things that I caught later after I watched Black Panther, but it wasn't, didn't take away from the overall story. So again, this is another great movie. But no, I don't think you need to see this one to understand Infinity War and Endgame. You get a real great introduction to Black Panther in Civil War. So that helps you know who the character is already. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I went through it and I felt that way. So there you go. Avengers Infinity War. Duh. Yeah, you absolutely have to watch this one. There's no way you can understand anything going on anywhere in Endgame unless you watch Infinity War. That's a must watch. Have to watch that one. Ant-Man and the Wasp. I actually would say no to this. Because really the only thing that affects any of the movies is that final scene. That's three minutes of the movie. So you don't need to watch a whole movie to understand the last three minutes of it. And plus, in Endgame, it all gets pretty well explained by Scott. So, I'd have to say no to this one. I mean, it does help you understand what's going on with Scott, but, you know, and it makes that scene with the mouse a little bit funnier. But, again, I don't think you need that scene. I don't think you need that movie to understand what's going on with Endgame. Okay, Captain Marvel. Now, some will argue this one with me. I've had, I've had this discussion. I don't think you needed to watch Captain Marvel. Here's what you needed to know. Captain Marvel is powerful. That's it. Because that's really all you get in, in Endgame. She comes around, knocks down Thanos' ship, tries to beat up Thanos, Thanos kicks her butt. That's Captain Marvel's story arc in Endgame. So, with that said... I don't think you need to watch Captain Marvel to get in to watch Endgame. So, what can we gather from that about Endgame? Well, my count is 11. So about half the movies. Still a lot of movie watching. But a lot of good movie watching. So, I would say you need to watch 11 movies to really understand Infinity War. I think it's that simple. Anyway. Just thought I'd like to run that down. What do you guys think? I mean, do you think you need to watch all 22 movies to understand Infinity War? 
or can you fudge it a little bit and cut some out? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep the YouTube algorithm happy.